for the introduction, as we know that the clinical is the best order that characterizing the posterior ankle pain and also occurs by the patient have tried to force plantar flex. And this is, could be dividing into the acute condition or being part of chronic repetitive stress uh, problem. The Jarvis and Verkel has already been described in about the soft tissue impingement from the backside of the ankle, but also the Hamilton mentioned about the bony impingement can also be uh, part of the source of the pain from the posterior part of the ankle. And also we can see that not only the, uh, the, the name can be uh, including about the posterior block of the ankle, posterior triangle pain and austero posterior tibial talar impingement syndrome. So actually the source can come up from the soft tissue injury that we can divide into the Achilles tendinopathy, sometimes to do from the retrocranial bursitis or the FHL tenosynovitis or tendonitis. And the second thing also can come from the bony problem, regard, uh, including the hagmoniformity, stress fractures about the OCD and tarsal coalition. And the third thing could be also being part of potential source is the neuromuscular injury coming from the entrapment of the cerebral nerve, tarsal entrapment, and also the popliteal arterial entrapment. But also this condition could come uh, simultaneously uh, working together between the bony and the soft tissue problem at the same time. So from the anatomy and etiology, we can see from the actual view, by the time the patient complaining about the uh, backside of the ankle is getting uh, hurt, Actually, we can see that the pathology can come up from the trigonal processes and also comes from the FHL dysfunction and also this could come up from the subtalar pathology and could be dividing into the posterior lateral trigonal process, ostrigonum, FHL tendonitis, and also uh, impeachment from the posterior medial process of the backside of the talar bone itself. So the clinical presentation was always about the chronic and recurrent posterior ankle pain. That causing that caused by the forced plantar flexion or push off activity, and the patient should always complain about the deep pain, and also including about the mechanical component by the time he or she flexed ankle itself, and the tenderness deep toward into the Achilles tendon, and the FHL tenosynovitis will characterizing by the pain that on the posterior medial ankle and radiating distally along into the medial arc. And also the passive and active ankle or hallux range of movement is very painful. So this is the uh, posterior impressment view that uh, we can try to also uh, perform if you want to check about more det uh, to detect about the body posterior impressment that mentioned that we will try to uh, by Dick van Dyke. Uh, for the conventional that will be the true lateral so we can try to let a bit more uh, extra lateral, uh, like five to 10 uh, degree. So we can see clearly about the uh, backside problem comparing with the uh, conventional one. And this is, that's uh, some view from the posterior and uh, view that we can see according to the left side and the medial on the lateral according to the processus uh, uh, stadia also from the osteochondral injury or involving from the osteoglonum itself. So this is the algorithm that we can use. So by the time the patient was complaining about the pain on the backside, by the time he or she forced the black lantern flex, could be we could be dividing the acute condition or repetitive and chronic uh, condition. For the acute trauma setting, so maybe we can set both from performing the X-ray and also CT scan if uh, we want to see more clearly. But if the patient is complaining on the long situation, so we can use both from the radiographic standard X-ray and also MRI evaluation for see about the involvement from the soft tissue problem. And then we can uh, wait for two kind of uh, condition for three until six weeks for uh, applying the conservative treatment. But if the pain is still persists, on the acute condition so we can proceed by using the MRI evaluation and then after that we can decide whether we have to choose by uh, by the open technique or the minimal invasive one. So the consultative treatment could be divided into the uh, giving a resting position into the ankle itself and also modification of the activity 
give some physiotherapy or protective dorsiflexion taping, or also giving the longitudinal arc support, giving the anti-inflammatory drug. Also, we can sometimes giving the injection steroid by uh, the ultrasound guided, and also the 60% uh, success rate has been mentioned by Mr. Hendrick at 1994 for the conservative treatment result. And for the surgery, we can divide it into the open or closed technique by using the postural lateral and postural medial open technique. For the postural lateral open technique, the advantage we can see more clearly about isolated bone impingement. But for the postural medial, we can choose if we want to see more clearly about the FHL pathology involvement more further. And the other thing also we can try to set by using the atroscopy one. So we can start by the first discussion case. This is male 25 years old with the normal BMI. He was complaining about the pain on his left posterior ankle and aggravated by the hyperflexion position. There will be no history of trauma and also the white color worker. And then we decided at that time to performing this uh, MRI and showing that the osteogonum is quite big. And also from the actual view, we can see that the osteogonum also protruding and creates some edema and also inflammation on the FHL uh, location from the actual view. So at that time, we decided to open the, this one from the postural lateral technique. And then we can see that the bone is almost like consists the diameter 1.1 uh, uh, cm. And then we proceed to the second case. This is also the male, 23 years old, also with the normal BMI, and also the have the same experience, the uh, problem on his right posterior ankle. The ankle of um, uh, range of movement is getting limited, and also tenderness of on the posterior ankle. And we can see from the standard uh, X-ray that we found that some stadia process appearance. So we decided to perform the open technique also. So this, uh, and also we check by using the MRI to see about the involvement of the soft tissue itself. We can see from the axial view and from the sagittal view that the, the tongue of the teller is a little bit protrude into the backside and also impinge to create some inflammation of the, on the FHL location itself. So we decided to perform it also with the same one to open up from the postural lateral incision and also cut uh, using the osteotomy, and we can see this is the result after the operation that the tongue from the talat is getting reduced comparing with the previous one. And this, this is the third case, the male Caucasian, 45 years old. We can see that the pain on his right posterior ankle and radiating along the medial arc of his ankle to the foot itself. And we decided to performing also uh, the posterior ankle arthroscopy because the patient had choose to be performed under small incision. And then we, we found that during the MRI showing that this is also concerning about the osteogonum and also about the uh, pushing effect from the osteogonum into the soft tissue surrounding on the axial view. So we decided to performing the ankle arthroscopy by performing the postural lateral and medial small incision, like one and a half in, uh, CM incision from but, uh, both from uh, side of the Achilles tendon. And we can see from this picture that we try, first we try to separate the bone from the uh, soft tissue that's surrounding the osteogonum and the astrodom is quite big at that time. And also we can see that also uh, even uh, the bone is quite pushing into the uh, FHL on the left side that's showing sometimes have the impingement at that side. Okay, and this is also showing from the picture on the right side. And after we try to remove all the soft tissue, we can easily remove and try to separate it, the bone because actually the bone is quite big. I have to, to divide it, the bone into the several big chunk of the bone to make easier us to remove the bone itself from the location. And this is the, uh, the third image we can see. We have to also for, uh, do further 
uh, release on the soft tissue on the back from the of the bone itself and also from this side we can see we try to dividing first the, the, the bone so we can easily uh, take it out from the location from the back side of the ankle itself this is after we try to want to remove it and then try to uh, separate it and also we can see this is the result after we try to remove the bone and we can easily found that FHL is moved freely without any entrapment from the side of the uh, back from uh, the FHL itself. So for the tech home set, we can see that the posterior ankle attachment syndrome is a very common problem in the hind foot area. And the typical symptom is the pain that forced by the plantar flexion uh, position. And also we can see that the pin view can could give us more detailed data rather than using the lateral standard X-ray. And also the problem could come up from the bony problem or also come from the special diagnosis. We still have a chance to performing the conservative treatment uh, by 60% of the first, uh, full rate. And also surgical management could be dividing into the open or posterior ankle arthroscopy technique. Thank you so much, Dr. Andri. I'll report back to you again. Thank I you, end Dr. Up the show. Sun.